Okay, the nose. Uh, so I'm gonna put some cinnamon down here. I'm gonna erase this line. Okay, so these hairs are going this way. And the fur, fur size of, on the nose is really short. So I'm gonna sharpen this and kinda put the short first stroke texture in there. Hmm. So I see that I have put this black mark here. One, two, three. Really, it needs to be here. So that's disappointing. Keep it on. See if I can figure out what to do about that nose.
Okay. So I'm gonna stand up for a second. See what I have going on with this whisker spot. Actually, that's really not bad. Maybe just over a little bit. Okay. I'll just use a little dark sepia to move it a sconch. Too much, but anyway, as I put it back to exactly how it was before, just a little bit. Okay, so. So there's a little bit of dark here and here, which helps to map out the side of the nose. So I'm gonna use some sepia. And this is probably, what is that? A little cold gray blurb right here. Just gonna grab the cold gray one. Put that. You probably can't even really see that. There's some on this side too. Okay, so I already did the this part on this side and this would probably be better to be done in um, Burnt Sienna. But I'm going to see if I can do get this mark right. So there's like a, a little dot right here. And then some sepia right here. Now we do have some layers down, so I think it'll be okay if it's wrong. So that's where that piece goes. I'm gonna go ahead and get that burnt sienna. It's almost better for me if I look at the reference photo, the printout of it, which isn't that great because it's just regular old cheap, you know, like a cheap printer and printer paper. Because when I'm zoomed in on the nose, it's overwhelming. Like too much information. I'm trying to draw little first strokes, but they're kind of blobbing into each other.
I let Addie in, so she's softly snoozing over there. Don't know if you can hear her. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of use this to map in. So if you notice, there's like a almost triangular piece of the nose that's lighter from the, like I was saying, that's from the sun coming down on the nose. And then these hairs are reflecting the light more in the middle. So it's not a perfect triangle. Tiny, tiny hairs on the nose. make it too dark. So some of this has got to come down here. And when I say this, I mean the darker color. So I think when we were up there, we used walnut brown. Oh, I'm pretty sharp. I think I'm pretty sharp. We started with walnut brown, if I can recall correctly, up here. So because that's lighter, we can use it to make sure that the size of this patch is correct. And then it is in the right location. So this is where the hairs get crazy. So kind of like this. And then where that is, Kind of like a little convergence point right there. Something like that. Right in the middle. So 
measuring with my pencil about right there. Yeah. If not a little too far down, but it's okay. Okay, so we have, let's see, this. And then I'm going to grab the burnt sienna again and get the other side of the nose. Just looking down here, might as well put a couple lines on this way. Okay, so on this side. lighting system. Okay, so I'm wondering if I can just go over that line. I think I can. So I wisely, which is not something I say often about myself, drew this line from where this cat nose goes off to the slopes to the side. That was a good marker to put in because that can be tricky and it can really change the shape if you're off a little bit on it. Okay, so we have some crazy hairs going over here too. I should erase that graphite one I have right there. Okay. Now I'm going to stand up for a second and see if I have this right. So when I do that, I take off my glasses because I'm not worried about the details. I just want to know if the shapes look right mm -hmm. and the placement of the shadows is right. So I think so. So this, I don't want to go any lower. Probably keep the dark strokes to here coming down, but it does have that shape. And then we can use burnt sienna and then do the hairs in between. So I'm going to use sepia. 
or the bridge of the nose, the darker hairs. So I don't want to, I know I have the brown on there, but I don't want to cover over every bit in between. We want it to be kind of like how it was there. Trying not to be too routine with my pencil strokes. Sometimes it's easier to push up, sometimes down. And then I, I rotate my pencil a lot so that it keeps sharp for longer. And be careful over here because it's lighter on that side. Okay, that's better. Okay, moving along with the snoot. So we should probably put the dots on this side and then we can darken things. I'm gonna sharpen again. So here's this, which is needs to be darker. And this might need to be a little bit bigger. Okay, so this side. Work my way down. So this hair is coming into it, so I gotta leave spaces like it is. Hopefully that's okay. Okay, so then we have this piece, which might come a little bit more down there. And then this piece, which I had already put in. And 
I'm gonna gently put a spot right there and then see if it makes sense. It's almost like at a right angle. Kind of like that, yeah. His head is tilted and he's not completely symmetrical because who is? But that's similar to these. So because the head is tilted, that's a little whack. Makes the nose a little bit more tricky. So I feel like just a little bit more this way. I don't think I have a base over here. So I'm just going to roll with the old warm gray two and um, send one. I'm going to have to put some more color in there, maybe some darker fur lines, I'm not sure. Now I have the salmon. there too. Why not? I'm going to grab the brown ochre, put some in the middle. And on the sides, mine's not really laying down, so I'm going to sharpen it. I'm, I'm glazing it. So glazing is just um, gently putting color down, but not necessarily um, lines. Okay, so I'm going to do warm gray two. And so there's kind of a gradient on the part of the nose. We haven't done anything to yet. So I'm going to try and capture that. Because that's pretty interesting. Okay. 
So I'm gonna go with um, warm gray two here. but not the whole um, nose. I see like a semicircle of uh, different colors. So there's a warm gray and then I'm gonna do flesh. Ugh. Beige red. I'm trying to steer clear of this. Do you remember when we put cold gray right there? So just filling all that in. And a little bit of white. Oh, that is not white. Should I use white, cold gray? I think white. And then in the middle, I'm gonna use Venetian red. Ooh, I have no idea where that is though. Or do I? I have jars that I separate my pencils in. Um, the smaller ball jars are good. And then any other sh shorter, I don't want those big giant ones where you can't can't dig your pencil out. But anyway, I, I separate them by color. So I have like reds, pinks and purples, yellows, oranges, like that. And that works pretty good for me. So maybe I'm gonna put warm gray down first before I do this. Or a cold gray would be cool. So maybe a cold gray three. That was a little bit heavier than I wanted. And this is the Venetian red. I'm just going to put this kind of as a base and then um, draw some, we'll try and indicate some real tiny hairs on top, which we'll see how that goes. Got to double down on my cold gray. I like polychromous cold gray better than um, Prisma. The Prisma ones are kind of uh, green, the cold gray, I think. like a green blue. I made those hairs too long, but that's okay. 
I'm not going for perfection. Now maybe we could use a darker cold gray to put some lines, maybe four or five. On these, the side here. I'm trying to put fur lines. Might want a darker, maybe a cold gray five over top. It's not really dark enough. The top of the nose needs to be darker. So probably used Payne's gray when we did the nose. So I'm just gonna put some black on top of it. Try and refine my nose shape a little bit. And darken the blacks, it always helps. I don't know what I really did right there, but that's okay. I think dog noses are easier than cat noses. Just gonna try and like rub some black on here. Trying to leave space where the hair is coming over. Okay. So I need to darken that and then like just keep darkening everything in relation to each other. Just looking at the nose. I'm gonna try a little brown ochre right here. Okay. 
So for the sides, maybe some burnt ochre and some brown ochre. Then we gotta darken it. Oh, my phone just shut down. My iPad is pretty old. I shall be sad when I have to get another one. I really don't want to. Hopefully it'll keep lasting. All right, so Let's try some more. It's going to have to be darker. So, thinking, thinking. A little bit more burnt sienna, and then we might have to use, we're going to have to use something darker. Maybe dark sepia. I'm using more pressure. These reading glasses, I wear them so much. I always wear these when I draw and I have ah, for years. Probably since I started drawing again, so maybe five or six years. And I just don't want to go up because then I'm worried I'll have to keep increasing my magnification. But I wear them. You know, I'll put them back on the top of my head a lot. And then as a result, it's stretched out the arms and they slide down on my nose. Makes me feel like, I don't know, like I have a cold or something. Okay, so I'm going to put some dark sepia in here. I'm going to try and be careful with it. Maybe first put some black on these marks so we don't lose them.
that I do over here too. Okay. Just trying to capture the darker areas. Not sure this is the, the right color, but I can't think of what. I must need like a darker burnt sienna, but it's okay right here on this side, especially. Okay, I think that's okay. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'll maybe even put some more back. Okay, back to the maybe not the best color. Almost like all little spots. That's not bad. Okay, so got little tiny spots in the, on the lower part of the nose that I want to try and define. Try cold gray. Mm. 
five. So I'm going to sh sharpen it. start by putting it on this these little sides of his nose see how that goes and then this side Now, debating whether or not to put some of that in here. To show the fur lines. I'll we'll start up top. I feel like it's a fine line between showing the fur marks and then having a ton of lines, if that makes sense. Might put just a couple of darker marks in with uh, my darkest warm gray, which I to be the warm gray six that's five here it is So I'm just going for the edges. Maybe a little bit right here. too prominent right there. The problem with erasing is, well, a couple. You can smear and then it's going to take off, you know, multiple layers. Okay, I'm going to put some more Venetian red right here. And some cold gray. But 
first I'm going to use cinnamon. I'm going to get cold gray too. Oh, I was using or was it three? Two sounds good if I can find it. That is warm gray. Sometimes I look and look and it's like, I think I lost it and then I find it a couple hours later sitting right in front of my face. There you are, you were hiding from me. The sides of the nose should probably still be darker. We could try cap it or dumb violet. This is just a really pretty color and it's great in the animals because it's it's got a brown to it but it it has it also has like the you know the violet like it says it's a good darker tone And it goes great with oranges, which I'm kind of using here, even though this cat isn't really an orange tabby. He's a great tabby. Okay, do you think that's better? Went too high on that, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe put some down here. Moving on. Okay, so let's move to the right cheek. Actually, before we do that, I think I want to put just a couple more black lines in the nose. So I really want to sharpen it. I just see more contrast with um, dark lines in the reference photo. So for this, I'm fine with, and this I actually went over maybe a little bit too much.
Okay, I think that looks more like it. I'm going to draw some of these down a little bit. Okay, so moving on to this side of the cheek. So I'm gonna darken this. Okay, and I'm not going to do any more until I do. It looks like I did something for the base right there, but not here. And this needs to be bigger, so I better put that in first. So, cream. Cinnamon. Didn't take it quite far enough. Now it's kind of funky right there. That's okay. Warm gray. Brown, what is that called? Brown ochre. Got some orangey spots in here too. So some burnt ochre. Okay, orange or burnt ochre. <laughs> Kind of smooth out. It got funky there for me. I don't know why. Just have to roll with it. The different papers can all have issues. Okay, so probably some burnt sienna.
to put some fur lines on there. And a little black from the fur coming. It you know, looks like I kind of did that. Just put a little bit more. Needs to be pretty sharp. Whoa. Put like a big blue of pigment right there. Hmm. I've got warm gray. I'm just trying to smooth it out. I don't get this. Oh, that looks kind of funky. Okay, so I'm gonna put the base for this. It's so dark outside and it's only 4.30. I hope that's not impacting this video. Okay, so how about warm gray one I wish it would rain, but I don't, I think it's just a smoke plume. We are in massive need for rain in Virginia right now. So we'll go lay this in. Oh, got more eraser marks over here. Okay. 
So this is his little whisker um, marks down here. saying how good of a job I did doing that. I'm going to go ahead and take this all the way out. I'm going to go over this top again too. Fluffy kitty. Just looking at the color, cinnamon, and sharpen it. Ooh. I stuck it in the wrong one because I wasn't looking and I broke it. One good thing about the polychromos is they don't break as easy as the Prisma colors. I was looking over here and I wanted just to put a couple more marks. Um, Prisma colors were the first color pencils I used and high school art class and I don't know I really liked them because they were if you if you press down hard with them you get solid color it doesn't look like I don't know like a crayon or whatever but remember they used to have if you used to use them they used to, it used to say barrel B-E-R-O-L on the pencil and then somebody was saying I saw on Facebook not too long ago that that company was bought out and I have heard multiple people say that the quality has gone down since they were bought out but you can get a pencil and if if it's been dropped you know, if you drop it on the floor or somebody else dropped it, it can, um, I'm going to get the beige red. It can be broken all the way down through the whole core. I'm just going to put this in the middle because I don't think it's quite as pinky right here. So then when you go to sharpen it, it breaks uh, every time. It's very disheartening. I still love them. They're like my OG color pencils. And I'm working on a piece right now using them, but it's disheartening, especially if you have kind of an odd color that you would have to order that you couldn't just pick up at the store. Because of the, the stores around me, they only have, you know, the kind of, I guess, most popular colors that you can buy single pencils of. So if you need like an espresso or something like that, you might have to wait. And for me, I order from Blick Art and it they're my favorite, but they, it still takes a little bit to get your order from them. 
Plus, you spend that much money for pencils. You shouldn't break like that. I've even, um, I've been so frustrated before I Googled and saw where somebody said, like, heat up the pencil. So I stuck it in a, surrounded it with a heating pad and then let it cool. And that, I think that kind of worked, but I don't think it's like foolproof. You don't have to worry about that with these guys. They do lay down very differently. They're not kind of creamy like the Prismas and the Caran Dash. All right, so I'm gonna start mapping out that black patch with the Payne's Gray. I'd say all the pencils have pros and cons. I mean, the quality issue is really inexcusable, but they are cheaper than um, Caran Dash, the Prismacolor. It's like if I use one for too long or um, I miss the other one and kind of forget how I liked it, if that makes sense. Just different techniques that you can use for each of them. I treated myself to the Karen Dash, but I've only used them. Um, I did a portrait with two little girls on a horse, and I used them for that, even though it was on um, pastel mat, which pastel mat, usually I like to use these oil-based pencils. because I can push the pigment around easier and make stuff look soft and mix and remove pigment if I make a mistake or if I'm trying to make an effect. But I use the Caran Dash for the girl's skin because they have fantastic skin or uh, hues you can use for skin. But I prefer to use maybe the waxier pencils on this type of paper and the oil ones on pastel mat. And then I think both are pretty good on the drafting film, but it's totally a preference, preference thing. I just figured I would use the polychromos for this because I thought, I don't know, I thought I'd do a piece with using mostly 
one type of pencil because I know it kind of annoyed me when I was first starting and I would follow people's tutorials or watch them and they were using a whole bunch of different pencils. It's like, I don't have, you know, five boxes of pencils. And then I would freak out because like I told you before, I thought you had to have the exact same color, which you don't at all. I didn't know that. Is that too big? Uh, let's see. Stepping back for a second. Got the hair going the right way. Just trying to find my bearings. I guess I didn't pick the Prisma for this cat because Well, I thought we could erase easier with the polychromos, which you can. And they're, they're not that expensive compared to some of the others. They might be comparable to Prismas in price but they'll last you a lot longer. This might need to come in more. Okay, now I'm going to try and I'm gonna sharpen and darken. This is a mess up here. Maybe I'll map that in.
sharpen it again. So I'm just using a little bit more pressure now. I'm trying to remember to put in or leave out some spots for the lighter colored fur. It's kind of tricky. If I were using the wax base doing this cat, I would probably, so you could do a couple of different things for the whiskers and the lighter fur. You could put a, put an entire layer down first of um, titanium buff or like a, something like that, like a creamier color, and then um, creamier light color. And then you layer on top, like you don't burnish it or anything, but just like a normal layer, but a good solid layer. And then you should be able to take like a cutting tool to scrape over so, so you would draw, I don't know, your fur and then you wouldn't have to worry as much about keeping the areas pristine as I was, you know, saying like white. You could remove color pencil on top because it's waxy. Or you could use an indenting tool, like an embossing tool. I think that's what you call them. I got some from Amazon and it'll put a little dent in your paper. So then when you color over it, no pigment gets in there. Okay, still not quite as dark as it needs to be, but getting there. Oh, 
got some black there. Sharpen that. When it gets dull, it doesn't do me any good at all. It's a blob. Can't remember if I put black in that. Continuing with the warm gray three. Going more for the color, not fur lines right now. Just gonna take it all the way over because I don't see any lighter fur at this point. Because the edge of his little face is cut off. Well, I mean, I did that on purpose, but.
Okay, so we need some more color in here. Put more cinnamon here. Got a blob of pigment right there. And probably some, oh yeah, Beaster. I forgot about you today. Let me see if I can get rid of this. Better get rid of paper. So I'm looking for the yellowy parts for the bistro. Put some in there. It's really more yellow down here. Okay. Gotta map that cheek in and refine some stuff. Just looking at it. You know, that cap at Morna worked well on that side. Let's see. Let's see what it does over here.
Okay, I got distracted. And then I had to take a break, so I don't know what I was doing. So, I think I need to map in this side of the cheek. See if I can fix this camera a little bit better. Then I got up and the dogs were thinking that, I don't know, we were going to do something. No, not yet, puppies. Okay, so, hmm, dark sepia. So this, I've got to move my iPad over now. Um, so this darkness comes down and kind of outlines the cheek a little bit. Well, that's what I'm calling it anyway. Oops. Usually it's sunny and I can't draw this time of day because the sun comes in this window. I can't draw and record. So I don't know if I have the um, fire to thank. Or fires, I guess. Or it's just cloudy. I do see a little bit of sun right now. But anyway, I'm kind of glad. I'm trying to get this kitty cat done. I want to get it done before I go to the beach. I don't know if that's going to happen. I think I need to go in more. If you hear my phone, my poor husband is stuck, I don't know, three or four hours away picking up a trailer. And I thought he would have been on his way home. But he's not because they've got to fix. Uh, the back lights have to be working. The brake lights on the trailer and they're not. And it's illegal to drive like that. So somebody's working on it, I guess. So he's texting me. So if you hear that noise, that's what that is. Ordinarily, he would be home now. Just trying to... Get some drawing in while I can. It's not very happy based on the last text. I just pointed out that the guy knew he was going to buy the trailer from him and that wouldn't he have had it fixed before Shane came to pick it up? That's pretty bad. Nope. 
can't tell. Is it still too big? Mm, I think that's okay. Okay, so then I'm gonna kind of smear this out. This is pretty blurry. I'm not interested in any detail right here. So here, refresh my memory. Would we use nougat? Let's do that. It's kind of yellowy. I don't even think get that big sand. That's horrible. <sighs> Looks like I did kind of some fur last time I did this. I just want to smooth that out a little bit, but you probably can't see that. Saw somebody's Maine Coon cat on Instagram the other day. She was so pretty. And I forget how bad kitties can be. And plus, I think I told you that Addie would probably eat it, so I can't have one except for the the stray that we feed. She doesn't like that cat. I, f I had to change where I feed him so that, because it's inside the fence. It, we built a fence for Addie and I was feeding the cat right outside the back door, which was not gonna work out if Addie was outside. So I moved his feeding spot. So he's outside another back door that's like a French door. So it's glass. And it's in an unfinished basement. Well, Addie figured out that the cat comes in to eat and then sometimes she goes downstairs and waits for him. And then like we hear her barking. So now when I feed the cat, I have to make sure I shut the door so she can't do that. It's just rude, really. Like, let the cat eat, you know. She gets food whenever she wants it. You can't see what I'm doing up here, but I'm just putting some... I'll show you. Put some brown over up here. because I want it some more color. Okay, moving down again, where were we? I'm gonna put some of that in here. It's so funny, I thought this color was so horrible. I thought it was so horrible, I left it in the box and then packed it away downstairs with extra supplies. Until I was working on something when I figured out I really needed it. I had to go hunting for it. All right, so let's get some more color. I don't know what's going on there. More color, more lines. This. 
Looks kind of yellowy to me. And here. Right here and here. Probably need to work on the eye a little bit too. Just a little bit. I feel like we did some good good work there. It just needs a little enhancing. Pretty light, which I suppose it is, but maybe a little warmer. Oh, three. Nougat. Just want some lines. Should have sharpened it. Sienna. That's another cool color that I would never think, and I think I had to dig it out of the basement too, is green gold. I can't remember what piece I was working on, but that one was like key for that. Let's see. I will say though that, like, I like, um, hmm, what is it called? It's called something different in Prisma. Maybe burnt umber? And then it's no burnt umber, it's a dark one. What's the lighter one in Prisma? But then it's raw umber in um, Polychromos. And I really just, I'm sure I'll be proven wrong like I have been by everything else, but I don't like that color. So strong, I prefer to use Beaster. I'm gonna try just a smidge of the green gold right here and see what it does. It's just like it sounds. It's like a green and a gold. Yeah, not the best right there. Okay, I think that's better. So just 
rounding out the cheek. Need some more lines in it. So I guess I'm gonna go for dark sepia here and some in here. And we could use the panes. Probably use the panes in here, but this, I'm not sure about the panes and um, burnt sienna together. Pretty dark right here. And the fur is going every which way. Got the black. So I guess I'll switch to the paint. Make sure my pencil is sharp for this, or I get blubs. It's kind of doing that now. Might need to get another one of these. Prismacolor pencil sharpeners. Okay.
Oops. Sometimes it's just the blondes come out stronger than I would like. And you can, you can kind of soften them with another pencil. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So then let's refine the cheek a little bit more. I like these sad parts because you don't have to be so worried about. Is it perfect? Nah. So that was the dark sepia. I don't remember if I said that, but this is the nougat. I'm going to use the titanium buff just a little bit to see what that looks like. Smooth it out some. This is a really nice color. It's not exactly white. It's not cream either. I think that's working pretty good over here. Okay, let's smoosh some stuff over here a little bit. I don't want to do it over the pain screen because that might be a mess. So this is just burnt sienna. And I feel like this is more orangey right here, so I'm gonna get burnt ochre. I'm just gonna glaze it. And then I was missing some of that up here. Okay. Maybe some of that up here. So maybe a few pencil lines in here to signify fur, but uh, I'm not gonna go too crazy. Let's do Maybe the warm gray four. I feel really bad for my husband. Okay. 
You know, like, I know everybody has bad things happen to them, because that is life for sure. But do you know anybody that... It just seems like they kind of have worse luck than other people. And I I don't even believe in luck, so I'm, I don't even know why I'm saying that, but it does seem like that with him. Oh, he's such a hard worker. Okay, that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit darker in the cheek with the dark sepia. And then I think we'll be done with this part. Which is pretty exciting. As Shane would say, we're in the short rows now. Although I was thinking about what are we going to do about those whiskers? But you know what? We don't get afraid of things. We just do them. That was the um, brown ochre. I'm just looking at where I might need some more color. 